Hello, I'm Aras, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Dublin. Today, I'll show you how to create a read replica through the AWS management console for an RDS instance. For the purposes of this video, I will be focusing only on RDS and not the Aurora service. Let's get started. A read replica can be used to reflect the changes of a master instance in real time. This feature allows us to scale out and serve read traffic for your instance, which alleviates the read pressure of your main database. These replicas can also be used as a solution for disaster recovery, because you can promote this replica to be a standalone instance if the source instance fails. After logging in to the AWS Management Console, navigate to the RDS Console. Then, navigate to the Databases page on the Navigation section on the left. Here, you can see all your RDS instances and clusters for the region that you are in. Select the RDS instance that you want to create a read replica for. In the drop-down Actions menu, select Create Read Replica. This takes you to the Create Read Replica DB Instance page. Notice that some settings are predefined. The reason for this is because it's a best practice that your read replica can be configured the same as your master instance. Of course, you can go ahead and change these settings to meet your needs. First, select your region. For the purposes of this video, we'll stick with the same region as the target for the read replica. Choose your DB subnet group. This should be the same as your source subnet group. Specify the availability zone in which your read replica is launched. By choosing no preference, we allow RDS to choose for us. Next, decide if this should be publicly accessible. This choice determines whether your instance has a public endpoint that can be accessed from outside your VPC. Within the encryption options, you are limited to whether your source instance is encrypted. If your source is encrypted, you can launch only an encrypted read replica. If your source is unencrypted, you can launch only an unencrypted read replica. Within the instance specifications, select the instance class that you require. As mentioned before, it's a best practice to stay on the same instance class as the source. It's important to have the same specifications in case your master instance fails. This way, you can promote your read replica to a standalone instance which can then handle the same workload as your previous master. In my case, I'm changing it to an OR5 extra large. Because it's possible to create a read replica that's also deployed under multi-AZ, you can select whether your replica needs to be multi-AZ deployed. This provides higher availability for your replica by launching a standby instance in a different zone. By enabling multi-AZ, you enable a feature that can fail over to a secondary instance in case of instance failure. This reduces the time needed to recover for your instance. If you enable multi-AZ, visit our pricing page to see the different costs associated with this choice. Multi-AZ deployments can also reduce downtime during some modification and maintenance events. To avoid I.O. latencies during the initialization process of the read replica, it's a best practice that you enable multi-AZ feature after the replica is created. Select the storage type. Remember that if you change the type, this will directly affect the amount of time it takes to create your read replica, as well as the instance performance until conversion is complete. Enter a name for the instance. This name determines the endpoint which you'll use to connect to the RDS instance. Change the database port only if you want to use a port number other than the default port. Specify if you want to copy tags to snapshots. You can enable IAMDB authentication if you are going to manage your database users through AWS IAM. Specify if you want to enable enhanced monitoring. Choosing this enables over 50 new metrics for your RDS instance. Through this, you can get a more granular view of your instance performance. For some engines, you can enable log exports to export the log files that you enabled on your instance. These logs are exported to Amazon CloudWatch logs for long-term retention. You can select the logs to export here. Next, depending on the version of the engine that you have selected, you're prompted to enable Performance Insights. Performance Insights expands on existing Amazon RDS monitoring features to illustrate your database's performance and help you analyze any issue that affects it. With the Performance Insights dashboard, you can visualize the database load and filter the load by weights, SQL statements, hosts, or users. If enabling Performance Insights, you can specify how long you want to retain this data, either for 7 days or up to a 2-year long-term period. 
When enabling performance insights, you must encrypt this data through the use of an AWS managed key through KMS. You can use either the default RDS key or your own custom key. Last but not least, specify if you want auto minor version upgrades to happen automatically. This is a feature that you can enable to have your database automatically upgraded when a new minor database engine version is available. When you finalize the details, choose Create Read Replica at the bottom of the page. When your Read Replica finishes the creation process and goes into the available state, it's ready to serve your application. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.